Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to watch me live stream, and like and subscribe for less pirates next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Shantae, the half-genie hero, meaning that we finally get to use Genasi. Would she be a Genasi? She's the only Gen I see. That joke doesn't really work. Her name's not Jen. Hit me with your genie's bottle. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to dance, like we have ants in our parachute pants. Those are parachute ants. Next, we need to shapeshift into a variety of creatures, mostly animals, but some non-animals. Finally, we need to whip our hair back and forth so hard the enemies will allow. Boy, I'm really stretching the pun budget today. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Charisma will be number one. Everyone loves Shantae. She only gets games because the fan base fights for them. Maybe Captain Falcon should learn to belly dance. Dexterity after that, obviously, Shantae keeps it light. Who would want to wear warm clothes? Wisdom next to handle the animal, you must become the animal. Follow that up with strength, lots of platforming to do, so we need the jump stat. Constitution is a bit low. We'll have other ways to stay in the fight with less HP, and we'll dump intelligence. We just don't need it for anything beyond puzzles, which, like, I never restrict low intelligence characters from solving puzzles. It's just kind of a weird thing to do. Shantae is a half genie, which means Genasi is a go. But what kind of Genasi? Well, she can't breathe underwater without turning into an animal, otherwise why would she turn into an animal to go underwater? So, water's out. She can't make fire without an item, so not fire, and she can't levitate without turning into a harpy, so I'm taking air off the list as well, leaving us with Earth Genasi. Then I'll give you Earth Walk to ignore difficult terrain made by rocks or Earth, and that's it for now. For the free stats, plus two to dexterity and plus one to charisma, we get to move them around now. I really like that customization option. Sorry if you don't. Take the entertainment her background for performance and acrobatics proficiency, letting you dance your way to wealth. We'll kick things off as a bard to get three skills of our choice, animal handling, perception, and persuasion, I think. You can do literally anything you want. This build's pretty flexible. We're going bard mostly for spells, like Featherfall to prevent five falling creatures from taking falling damage. They're called parachute pants for a reason. They're actually harem pants, but eh, Shantae does take falling damage. Cure Wounds heals 1d8 plus your charisma modifier to a creature you touch, helping you get some hearts back. Earth Tremor is a low-level quake dance. It's weird you're getting so early, but it forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 10-foot radius around you, knocking them prone and dealing a d6 of bludgeoning damage if they fail. It also turns the area into difficult terrain that you get to ignore as an earth genasi. That's nice. Long strider boosts your movement speed by 10 feet. I wish we could get jump instead. That's the mobility spell I want, but hey, that's the fun of bard. We can get it later. For cantrips, there aren't actually that many that we need. Light lets you see in the dark with your not fire genasi eyes and friends gives you advantage on charisma checks with a certain creature, but after a minute, they'll know you're using magic and not like you. Turns out that your hips can lie. You also get Bardic Inspiration, a pool of d6s equal to your charisma modifier that you can give to an ally for an ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. Shantae would be great for doubles in Smash if she was in Smash. Second level bards get Jack of All Trades, letting you add half your proficiency bonus to any skill check you're not proficient with, making you a little more flexible. Very important for belly dancing. You also get Song of Rest, letting your allies heal an extra d6 on short rests. All the Shantae soundtracks are bangers. For this level spell, Charm Person forces a wisdom saving throw on a creature, charming them for an hour if they fail. It's taking us a bit to get the real transformation stuff. If we went druid, we would have it by now. It's just like, she does dances to transform. That's so bardy. We'll get there. Third level bards get expertise in two skills, doubling your proficiency bonus with them, like performance and acrobatics, making you the ultimate entertainer. You can also learn second level spells, like see invisibility, letting you see invisible stuff for an hour for that see or dance. You can also choose a bardic college. Valor bards get combat inspiration, so your allies can add to your inspiration die to damage rolls or to their AC to avoid getting hit. Maybe they'll put Shantae in Multiverses or Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl. I'd watch a cartoon. Fourth level bards get an ability score improvement, start working on Charisma, that's the performance stat, spell casting stat, and number of bardic inspiration die you can use stat. For this level spell, Enthrall forces a wisdom saving throw on creatures. Failing that, they have disadvantage on perception checks to see other creatures. Get all the eyes on you, they should have been there anyway. Quick dip over to Monk now, I need the Hair Whip and we can get that with Martial Arts. Then I'll let you make an unarmed attacks with your dexterity modifier. They deal a d4 of damage, and you can make one with a bonus action after you make one with your action. An unarmed attack uses any part of your body. Technically, that includes your hair. You're just probably going to hurt your neck. You can't use martial arts while wearing armor, so you get unarmored defense to make your AC 10 plus your dexterity and wisdom modifier when you're not wearing armor. Sometimes I say that people in commoner garb are just wearing light armor, but the bare midriff pushes that a little bit too far. She's not wearing armor. Back over to bard, fifth level bards get a font of inspiration to recover your inspiration die on short rests. 
rests rather than long rests, and the die bumps up to a d8. You can also learn third level spells like Plant Growth, which you can cast as an action to make a bunch of twisty vines that cost four times as much movement to get through, or you could cast it over eight hours to double the yield of plants in a half mile radius for a year. That refresh dance could make you way more money than just a standard groove. If you learn third level spells, Plant Growth is a retirement plan. Six level Valor Bards get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks with your action instead of one or up to three with your martial arts. That's a lot of hair whipping. For this level spell, Lesser Restoration is another option for the Refresh Dance, removing an effect of disease, blindness, deafness, paralyzation, or poisoning. But 7th level Bard is what we really need. Here, you learn 4th level spells like Polymorph, which lets you turn a creature into an animal of challenge rating equal to or less than their current level. That can be you, so you can be a monkey, a crab, an elephant, or a spider. If you want to stretch the definitions a bit, Shantae only really flies as a harpy, so you could call that a giant eagle. We'll get other options for the harpy form, though later. 8th level bards get another ability score improvement, cap off your charisma modifier to be the best dancer you can possibly be. For this level spell, greater invisibility makes you invisible for a minute. Technically that's a potion, but we have room for it on the spell list, so we might as well take it. Ninth level bards can learn 5th level spells. Greater restoration is like lesser restoration, but greater. Only if you're trying to cure charming, petrification, a reduction of ability scores, or total HP, or a curse. If you were trying to cure something from lesser restoration, lesser restoration would actually be better. But this removes a curse. Maybe a pirate it's curse that's the third game 10 level bards get expertise in two more skills i think animal handling and persuasion will be the most fun you also get magical secrets here which will give us the harpy and mermaid forms with two spells from any list fly gives you a 60 foot flying speed for 10 minutes depending on your concentration and alter self lets you give yourself a swimming speed and the water breathing ability or some other stuff that's what i want for the mermaid thing but you can also change your appearance or give yourself some natural weapons that deal 1d6 plus your strength modifier and damage they have plus one to attack and damage rolls and they're magical in terms of overcoming resistances your bardic inspiration die also bumps up to a d10 here that's pretty good 11 level bards can learn six level spells Otto's irresistible dance lets you force a creature to start dancing while they're dancing they use all of their movement speed to dance they have disadvantage on dexterity saving throws and attack rolls and attack rolls against them have advantage the first turn they have no option they are just dancing on following turns they can make a wisdom saving throw to stop dancing but your dancing is so contagious first turn they do have to dance 12 level bards get another ability score improvement bump your dexterity now for better ac and better hair whipping 13th level bards can learn 7th level spells teleport lets you teleport to a place on the same plane you're familiar with the more familiar you are with the location the more accurate you'll be so maybe just go to a place with some squids that you've met some nice friendly squids that don't care if they adopted the wrong child 14th level valor bards get battle magic letting you make a weapon attack as a bonus action after you cast a spell with your action letting you become monkey and attack as monkey in the same turn you can also learn two more magical secrets jump trip your jump distance for a minute kind of simple but 90 percent of the game is just jumping around it also doesn't require your concentration so you can cast it before you polymorph to triple the jump distance of the polymorphed creature call lightning will cover the spark dance making a big cloud 100 feet above you while it's active you can bring down a lightning bolt as an action to force a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a five foot radius dealing 3d10 lightning damage to those that fail and half as much to those that succeed since you can do it every round it can really add up at the end of a minute 15th level bards can learn eighth level spells Glibness sets the minimum for your charisma checks to 15, so your minimum performance check is 32 after the modifier is added. That's better than any character without expertise could roll with a 20. Best dancer ever. 16th level bards get another ability score improvement, cap off your dexterity for maximum flexibility and the heaviest hair whip you can get. 17th level bards can learn 9th level spells. True polymorph is like polymorph, except instead of beasts, you can turn the creature into any other creature. That means you can literally be a harpy or a mermaid. Why you would use a 9th level spell? to turn into a CR1 creature? I do not know. You could be an ancient white dragon, but Harpy and Mermaid are the in-character moves. 18th level bards get another set of magical secrets. Shape change is pretty similar to true polymorph. The difference is that you get to keep your soft stats and can keep changing your shape with your action on following turns, though you don't get more HP after the first time you transform. It lasts for an hour, so it's really great to have the full Shantae feeling. I'm a woman. I'm a monkey. I'm an elephant. I'm a jar that vomits gems. These are choices. Earthquake gets us our Quake Dance doing a ton of different things. A 100 foot radius becomes difficult terrain. Forces concentration saves on casters. A dexterity saving throw on everyone in the area, knocking them prone if they fail. And depending on your DM, you can make fissures and damage buildings as well. If you're the DM, definitely do that stuff. It's 
freaking rad. Our capstone is the 19th level of Bard for one last ability score improvement. Let's grab the Resilient Feat for Wisdom, bumping the stat by one and giving you proficiency with the saving throws. Wisdom saves are pretty common and odd numbers don't do anything. Rounding up a stat as our capstone after we got the power to become anything or shatter the very earth last level is a bit underwhelming, but it's better than just getting another Bardic Inspiration die, which is what we would have gotten if we didn't multi-class over to Monk. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you can become anything. As far as flexibility goes, becoming anything is pretty good. You're also loaded up with healing spells. The refresh dance is only one of Shantae's powers, but there's lots of healing options in D&D, so I took them. Healing is good. Finally, you've got massive charisma with a plus 17 modifier on your performance and an ability to make your minimum check a 20 after glibness. For weaknesses, you don't have a lot of real HP. Sure, polymorphing or shape changing will give you more HP, but as yourself, you've only got around 103 depending on how you roll. The shapes you're choosing if they're in character are also not really worth it. Elephant would be the toughest at challenge rating four, but you could be a massive dragon or demon. That's really just an RP choice. Finally, your intelligence is low, so Feeble Mind could stop you from casting spells and ruin your high charisma as well. So that means Shantae's weaknesses are a role-playing choice and one eighth level spell. Shantae is really good because she's really flexible. She can fight, she can transform, and she can heal. Do whatever you want, just watch out for a sneak attack. Running around with that low of HP is a bit risky. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon to watch me live stream and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.